video we're going to look at linear independence which is one of the uh, very important ideas in linear algebra. We're going to just go through that and explain what it is and a couple of uses in other bits of linear algebra that can help you solve equations etc. So the basic idea is that if vectors are linearly independent no combination will sum to zero other than the zero combination so just the zero vector multiplying by that. So to write that mathematically, you're just saying that some constants times uh, each vector will not sum to zero. It is not equal to zero. There is no combination of these c's that will give you zero for all except for just the zero combination. So it's different from that. So let's look at some examples. If you take these two vectors, 1, 1, and 2, 2, these are not independent. The reason being is that you can come up with some combination that sums to zero. You multiply this vector by minus two, you multiply this vector by one, you've got the zero vector. If these vectors were independent, you would not be able to find a combination that equals zero. This would not be possible. So you would refer to these two vectors as being dependent. Um, these two vectors, on the other hand, are independent because you can multiply these vectors by whatever you like apart from the zero vector and you will never get as zero. Any combination of these two will not give you zero. So these are independent. And you can think in terms of uh, graphs. You can say that uh, two vectors are independent if they're not on the same line and three vectors are independent if they're not on the same plane. Do you think that lines and planes have an equation which describes them? There is an equation linking all of the vectors so that they're going to be dependent in some sense so there's going to be some combination of these vectors that can be added to give zero because they all come from an equation. They're all linked in a way. And you can think in terms of the rows of a matrix and the columns, so you talk about the row picture and the column picture. So we're thinking about the row picture first. If you look at the rows of a matrix, right, you look at the rows and work out if you can add any of the rows, you can multiply by scalars and add them, some sort of simple row um, operations that will give you another row. And if you can, then that row is linearly dependent. That's a, a way that you can think about this and the use of this is that the rank of the matrix, there's lots and lots of different definitions for the rank of a matrix. But one of them is that the rank of the matrix is the highest number of linearly independent rows. So if one of the rows was um, linearly dependent and the other two were linearly independent, then you would have a rank 2 matrix. Uh, for example, if you look at this you can this is just using letters to make it very simple. You know that this row plus this row gives this row, which means obviously you can just add those two rows and subtract this other row and you can get zero. So then you can uh, say that this row is linearly dependent in terms of rows and if there's no combination of the first and second row that you can uh, do to get zero, so then these are these two, uh, vectors are linearly independent, that would make the rank of matrix most likely be 2. And think in terms of columns, it's the last thing we'll uh, do. It's a very good shortcut if you can immediately look at a matrix and see that the uh, each of the columns are linearly independent because it means if you're solving AX equals 0 you don't need to go through the whole algorithm. You just know that the only solution to AX equals zero with all linearly independent columns is just the zero vector. So you can instantly find the null space, which saves you a whole lot of trouble. So you are just getting a way of looking at matrices and spotting several characteristics. Another use is again another definition of rank. Uh, of a matrix, if all of the columns are independent then the rank is n. You know how you would say a 3x3 three three matrix, that's m by n. Or if you had a 3x2 matrix, 
m by n, so m is 3, n is 2, the rank of the matrix is just 2 because one of the definitions of rank for linear, all columns linearly independent is the rank is just n. So 3 times 2, n is 2, rank is 2. Considering just the identity matrix as being your A, you can see that each of these columns is linearly independent. That's the most simple matrix which has got all linearly independent columns. You can see that this multiplication works out to give you zero. And using the second rule here, you can see that the rank of this matrix is three. This is a three by three matrix. Each of the um, columns are linearly independent. This, ro this rule holds. So the rank of this matrix is three. If you think about it in the old way, which is just in terms of the pivots, you've got three of those. And we said the rank is three because the, the columns are linearly independent. The rank is three again. And that's the very basics of uh, linearly linear independence.